Grace and peace be to you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word peace is another example of words from the Bible that are a little bit different or difficult to translate into English because, of course, they're from another language. The Greek of several thousand years ago had a connotation that irene, the Greek word we translate as peace, was more like this. It's a sense of wholeness. It's a sense of well-being. It's a sense of being prosperous within the Lord's love. It's a sense of safety. It's a sense, a sense of harmony with God and others. A, a sense of good health, of completeness. And so it's a lot. It's the word shalom, if you know, or salam for Muslim brothers and sisters. Shalom, salam, peace means this beautiful balance of God's love and presence in one's life. And it's not an abstract idea. It's meant to be of encouragement for our very life. And so for Advent, I just wanted to encourage you in this way. Prayer is essential. The first lesson speaks of this in Isaiah. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. I think that's done through prayer. Prayer is a leveling effect for our lives. Prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight, is an image that in the Old Testament, uh, well even now, the land goes up and down and left and right. And the idea that things would be made smooth was only a dream. But here we are in Nebraska where God has granted smooth the whole state line. Right? We live in God's country. Now some of the people who travel the interstate think it's boring. It is smooth. It is not boring, right? It is very efficient. And so we give thanks to God for loving the state so beautifully. But as I make kind of fun of that, it is, don't you pray for, don't you hope for simpler things in life? Advent's a time where we can take away some of the complexity of life, some of the doubt, worry, confusion, in which breaks into life and allow uh, the good news as, as uh, the good news of God's preparation. And I encourage you to use prayer as your advent, prayer for peace. And I, I encourage people, let's pray for peace, like let's pray for the state of peace, of, of safety amongst nations and amongst uh, the people of each nation. But I also think praying brings peace, this type of peace, a sense of wholeness and connection with God. And whether your prayers are short or long, whether they're heartfelt or superficial, we all struggle about this. But it's as simple as this. God desires to have a relationship with you. It's relationship language. And so I give thanks to God for this encouragement. Second Peter lesson spoke of the words patience and also of peace. This idea of joining together in the whole, where all central parts are joined together. I used to think that rest and peace, I've seen that in uh, you know, westerns, and maybe you see that on people's tombstones, and I thought it used to be no more hassles. You've done the work of your life. But now I understand more fully rest and peace means to rest in God's completeness, God's love, the heavenly realm in which God's love and safety and prosperity and well-being for your life is entirely experienced. And so I have a, a new idea that perhaps we can rest in peace now also during this Advent season. I wanted to encourage you. Uh, stress, stress is a word that's, gosh, it's used a lot. Um, just stress, stress that creates a series of challenges in your life. Um, the ELCA pastors were all part of an insurance pool and I don't know who all those old, overweight pastors are. I need to find out who they are. Um, but as a group, we are not the healthiest risk pool. And on a more serious note, this is probably going to, this is impacting churches. I give thanks to God that you're generous through your uh, tithes and offerings that we can pay for the health care benefits. But really, the big issue for smaller churches is struggling. And how do we make sure we can pay for all the health care? So they'll send out little uh, emails to the pastors. And they'll basically say, do you have that feeling in the pit of your stomach? Is your back feeling tense? Do you have a headache? You're under stress. And you just want to say, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. God bless you. Right? Awareness is one thing. 
And sometimes we get so immune to stress that we kind of just power through it. Yeah. You know, just if you ever do that, you ever want to test yourself, just massage your jaw just for a little bit and see if you feel tension uh, being removed because so many of us keep it there or we keep it in our backs or we keep it in, in our uh, thoughts and minds. This sense of wholeness, this sense of peace is not just simple awareness, it's, a, it's an invitation to relationship. So I struggle about how to present to you the gospel in a way that is helpful to your life. I think that most of us here get um, but it's so much more than a thought. It's the living, loving relationship with our Lord in all avenues of life. At our home, somebody had given us a gift and it says peace. It does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and still be calm in your heart. I think that's sweet, but insufficient. It, it's about a relationship. It's not just a thought. And so I'm, I'm encouraging this Advent season for this understanding of our connection to God. It's more than a concept. It's more than a practice. It's the living, loving God who wants to be with you. And prayer is one of the most beautiful ways to experience that. Give thanks to God that you're here in worship. I give thanks to God that you serve people in need. I give thanks to God that you teach and edify, strengthen uh, the community of faith. But prayer is certainly what I want to lift up for you now. And carving out time, I'd like that to be your good stress. Where do I carve out time in my life to pray? I tease with the kids, you know, about praying in a car, so yes. Prayer can be open-eyed prayer, as you pray, can be a wonderful uh, invitation. I want to give thanks to the Faith Formation Board that they came up with a little creative idea to get the Message Bible. I think it's on four CDs. You can buy it for ten bucks, like the deal of a lifetime. And it's uh, there's a sign-up sheet that says you uh, leave here right before the cookies that are to be distributed to people in need. And what a great thing to have that as in your car and to be listening to that as you travel and have God's word being proclaimed here. Your words connected to God is what we call prayer. So I wanted to lift up a couple ideas and then give encouragement to you. One of the beautiful things about this uh, place that we call sanctuary is the, the root word of what sanctuary means, a safe place. Sometimes in my office when I have people in distress come in and I'll say, I'm creating sanctuary here. And they'll go, what, do, what does that mean? I go, you can say anything you want. You can be, you can say the most stupid thing ever. Because you need a place that's safe in which to speak. And you may not have it all together. I know I don't. And so let's just carve, tell me what's on your heart, tell me what's on your mind. Let's just let's just get some stuff out there. And sometimes in your prayer life it can be that way where you you want to make it polite, but you need a safe place in which to share your heart's concerns, your hopes and dreams, your intent, your goals for living, your ability to just have the confidence in which to live. This is a it's intimate relationship. And so I can't exactly teach you to pray, except I want to anchor back into the Lord's Prayer. One of the most amazing things to me in being your pastor and working with people that have severe dementia, very cannot communicate with other folks because of what that disease does to the brain and to the social interaction. But I am so amazed that if we start praying the Lord's Prayer together, our Father who art in heaven, deep from within, there's a connection to one. Isn't that amazing that God plants this prayer? Of course, Jesus taught it, but it's planted so deeply in the there's an expression of God. I wanted to lift up the Lord's Prayer for you and I during this Advent season. Our Father who art in heaven, Father be thy name. Holiness of God's love for you and you will be thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. This acceptance and invitation of God's presence in our life. Give us this day our daily bread. This, this constant reminder of God's blessing for our life. And forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And I used to struggle with the word trespass. But now, over the years, I like that word. In the scriptures, it says death. It's been translated as trespass. We do trespass in the old word prayer way we're doing it. 
Uh, I think that's accurate because we break into other people's lives and other people break into our lives. And so I give thanks for the God who uses these words to allow us to understand the, the boundary violations that we've had and experienced. And I heard that uh, Pope Francis doesn't like this line, and lead us not into temptation. I think that was in the uh, news this week. And uh, so I'll invite him to be a Lutheran for a day. This is the way we do it. We mentally understand and we spiritually approve God's not leading us into temptation. It's kind of like lead us, come. Not into temptation where we want to go. Lead us, God. Lead us not into temptation, but uh, deliver us from the wall. There's a beautiful comma of understanding there of God's leadership for our life. And then the last is the doxology. You know that Roman Catholics and Lutherans, we, start, we, we have you know, similarities and differences. So if you go to a Roman Catholic church, they will conclude their prayer uh, with the verse from evil. But later in the service, and for we immediately afterwards, we have these, this doxology. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That is a beautiful prayer just in and of itself. This prayer is, uh, of course, Jesus taught us it, but I would say to you, you can make it your own. Driving, talking, serving, before you sleep, all times. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So here's my invitation for prayer for this week. As you have an awareness of your anxiety for life, 1 Peter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxiety at God because he cares for you. Any anxiety, worry, concern that you have is an invitation to pray. It's not an invitation to buck it up. It's an invitation to pray. And cast is a beautiful word. It means throw. It means throw it all overboard. Throw it. The, the Bible has this imagery of send stuff away, God. As far as the east is from the west, send this away. God, these things are breaking my wholeness with you, my connection with you. And so whatever they are, and however small you may think they are, that it is your life that we're talking about. So I ask you for this uh, Advent season and, of course, beyond, is that whenever you experience worry, it's an invitation to prayer. And in that prayer, you throw it to God and ask for God's grace, safety, prosperity, well-being, completeness, and harmony with God. Allow God to uh, load with you and to take this and share this word with you. Secondarily, to take this message on the road. This is an invitation to anyone who's over the age of 18. One of the great joys of being a pastor here, our confirmation students are wonderful. They are intelligent, they're vibrant, uh, they're a little messy when they make cookies, but they were able to clean it up with leadership from Amy and Renee that will. Nothing, nothing was wrong. One of the young guys had a goatee of flour. That was one of my most interesting looks I saw yesterday. Um, but Brendan, I won't tell anybody but you. And, uh, but in this, our kids are picking up on the stress that we're living. So I get a chance to check in with them, and I gently ask them if there's anything bothering them. And I, I know that kids know places like North Korea. They know other stressors in life. And wouldn't it be amazing that we could pray as partners in life together, we as adults would take the lead and pray for the concerns that we have and cast them to God with our children. So that they're not learning that the Christian life is about praying here, we offer some prayers, it's about the Christian life is praying to God everywhere with unceasing gratitude and that and, and modeling about how we're concerned. Perhaps, yes, you'll use discretion and not everything that is a concern to you as an adult, but certainly the big things that uh, allow our children to see that as people of prayer, we bring peace through God's uh, confidence in God's love and care. So it's a double, it's meant for you and I, whenever we feel anxiety, to use this invitation of prayer, but also as a way to mentor our young people, that we, as people of faith, have our hope and peace in the Lord. Science of hope, praying for peace. I love Advent. It's not for just this season, it's for life. God, use these concepts that you teach us, especially help us prepare for the word, a way of your way of love and 
encouragement through prayer.